had someone on a coaching call not long ago ask me a really thought-provoking question. And they were very transparent with me, and they told me that they were still in contact with their narcissistic ex, and they were separated and all that, but they were still in contact with them. And they asked me, am I wasting my time doing calls with you and doing all this research and like doing all this work if I'm still in contact with my narcissistic ex? And the reason why this was really thought-provoking for me is because what you guys may not know is in my story, I stayed in contact with my ex for about four and a half months after we broke up. And I thought back to where I was in my head and where I was in my healing journey when it came to getting to no contact. And, well, it would probably just be easier to tell you the story. So, <clears throat> The approach that my ex took after we broke up was he really, really wanted to stay friends. He was saying things to me like, you're the best friend that I ever have. Like, I know it didn't work out for us, like, in a partnership, but, like, you've still been the best influence and blah, blah, blah. And just really just throwing it on me and guilt tripping me about, like, really wanting to stay friends and how essentially I was, like, his only friend. And wasn't completely inaccurate. But really the, the root of the reason that he wanted to stay friends with me is because he was silently competing with me. And looking back on it now, I'm able to see all of that. Like if he got wind that I was on a date, all of a sudden he was texting me about some date that he went on. Whether it was true or not, I don't know. You know, I was starting to lose some weight. So I was like posting like shirtless pictures on social media and stuff. And I, it, here's what's weird. I had him blocked on all my social media except for Snapchat. I'll be honest, I kept him on Snapchat to be a little petty um, because I was losing weight <laughs> and I wanted him to see that I looked good. And I kind of got over that after a little while to where I ended up hiding him from my stories. But I just, I couldn't get to this place for a while <laughs> to just completely go no contact with him because I felt like it was mean. I felt like it was, if I felt like it made me the problem. And I also didn't want to give him a reason to bad talk me and demonize me to other people. Because again, he was trying to stay friends. So I knew if I blocked him, he was going to be able to spin that and be like, see, I tried to stay friends with him, but he ended up blocking me. Here's where everything changed for me. I realized that my, during this four and a half months, sorry, I should say this, I was doing active work. Like I was going to therapy literally every single week, even if I couldn't afford it, I was charging it on a credit card. I started doing my six-week wellness wheel journey. I was literally journaling every day. I was working out again. Like, I was taking care of myself, but I was still in contact with this person. Well, I got wind from a semi-mutual friend about some things that my ex was saying about me. And it was just preposterous things. It was things that he was saying that, like, I never worked or I only made $10 an hour and... Even with that, like, I, again, I never worked because I was at home drinking all the time. I never took care of my kids. Like, he had to pay for everything. Like, literally things that were completely contradictory to who I was as an individual. So much so that this, like, again, barely a mutual friend was able to kind of read through everything because it was just so preposterous sounding. And I kind of had this light bulb moment where it was like, no matter what I do, no matter how nice I am to this person... No matter how much BS I put up with this person, I am always going to be a villain in their story because that's the kind of person that he is. Literally everyone in his life has villain is, is a villain. He has villainized almost every single relationship that he has had. He's villainized his parents. He's villainized family members, like bosses, coworkers. He is always the victim in his story. And it just made me realize that I am continuing to compromise my own inner peace just to avoid something that's unavoidable. And that's when I really started to shift of whether or not this was worth it. And still, I'll be honest, I still didn't necessarily even do it like that day. But at that point, I had made the decision, no contact is coming. Um, there was like some financial things that we were figuring out and he had like two more payments that he had to make to me and I had already decided at the last payment like I'm done well again 
they're smart, but they're not. The last payment was supposed to come. He texts me saying, I can't do it right now, um, but I can do it next week. And I was like, okay, fine. Well, next week came and gone. The week after that came and went. Never heard from him. And I knew what he was doing. What he was doing was he was waiting for me to reach out to him about the payment. Because now that this was like, like at this point, like he's off my phone plan. We don't share a storage unit together. Like literally every connection that we have was gone at this point. He had already even moved to a different state. The last reason that we even had to speak to each other was this payment. So I knew what he was doing. He was trying to drag it out because he was trying to continue to find a way to be in contact. Because I think he knew deep down I was done. And I was getting to the point where I was ready to cut him out. And that, I was literally about to text him about it. And I just was like, you know what? No amount of money is worth this. I didn't even say anything to him. I blocked him on my phone. I blocked him email. He was already blocked on Snapchat at that point in time. But I was done at that moment. And I never broke no contact after doing that. But the reason why I'm bringing this back to like what my client asked me is because what, <clears throat> when I was talking to her about this, what I realized is all the work that I was doing in that four and a half months, the going to therapy, the doing my wellness wheel, the journaling, the spending quality time with my family, spending quality time with my friends, working out again, doing little self-care things to myself, like making sure I did my nighttime routine every night or you know, get a massage every six weeks since I was working out. I kind of needed that anyways. Just doing these things to take care of myself. That work that I did gave me the strength to go no contact. So I'm sharing this with you because even if you're at a place where you haven't been able to go no contact, and you might even be in a place where you're not able to because of co-parenting situations or whatnot, but whether you haven't been able to get yourself to go no contact completely or at least go limited contact or just contact through the legal system, don't stop doing the work. Don't talk yourself out of meeting your therapist or meeting your coach if you have one or taking care of yourself or reading up on books and studying this and understanding your own trauma responses and your attachment style. Like, Don't stop doing that work because what you'll realize is the more work that you continue to do, the closer and closer you will get yourself to have the worth, the self-worth, to have the strength, to have that inner confidence enough to know, I am worth more than this. This person does not bring any value to my life, platonically, romantically, period. And that is how I was able to go no contact, was because if I, I really think if I hadn't been doing all of that work, I probably eventually, I don't know if I would have ever blocked him. I probably would have eventually just like stopped talking to him. But to get to the point where I was able to completely block this person out of my life, tell everyone around me, I don't care if you stay friends with him on social media. I don't care if you want to watch the circus, but I don't want to know about it. I don't want to know good. I don't want to know bad. I don't want to know ugly. I'm done. And I just got to this complete point of indifference where I don't wish him harm. I don't wish him well. I just don't care enough to wish him anything. All of that work is what got me to that point. And I can look back on that four-month journey, and I can see how it did slowly progress to where it was like, every time he texts me, I would still have that trained response that I had. I have to text him back right away. Well, then it was like I was able to tell myself, you know what, I'm going to wait at least an hour before I respond to him. And then it was, I'm not answering his phone call. I don't want to talk on the phone. I'm just going to keep it through text message. And then it got to the point where it's like, I really don't even enjoy talking to him. I know he's lying to me. The manipulation is still going both. I literally, like, I progressed to no contact. And that's okay. I got there. Maybe not as fast as, like, I should have, quote unquote. But if you're not there yet, keep doing the work because you'll work your way up to that point. Sometimes people are able to just break off, go no contact from day one, and that's it. But I think because of the work that I did, that also is what gave me the strength to go no contact and to never break it. Since that point that I have blocked them completely, I have never unblocked them from social media. This has been over two years at this point. I have never checked up on them. I have never been tempted. I've never even been tempted to text this individual or email them or anything. And I know it's because I did such disciplined work that got me to that point. 
So hopefully that encourages some of you guys that might be struggling to get to the point of no contact or just feeling any kind of guilt or shame about that. Just understand some of us, it's a process. Some of us, it may take time to get to that point. And that's okay. It may, it, it, there's no time limit to your healing journey. And when you compare your healing journey to other people, that's where we can get to the part where we're kind of like beating ourselves up over that. So if you are like me, and it's been a couple of months, just keep going. Reach out to people that have maybe been through this before and ask how they did it. Ask the work how they ask the work that they did to get to that point. You can always reach out to me through coaching sessions as well. I you don't have to work with me for forever. You can just do like a one time call and just ask me about the work that I did and just go on the journey on your own. But just go continue on the journey. That's the main message of this. Continue on your journey. And if you're not there yet, I promise if you just keep doing the work, you'll get there eventually.